on the road to the mid-season cup in 2024. I bet a lot of you guys are wondering, what does MLBB look like around the world? We're about to go into the biggest MSC yet, the biggest event in possibly the history of our beloved eSport. And I'm going to take you guys around the world. First up, we're checking in with MPL Men. I invited a very good friend of mine, my Yasta. Yasu, how are you, buddy? Yes. I'm doing great, actually, and it's an honor to be with you on this series. Man, you're the first in a line of videos explaining what MLBB is like around the world to uh, the larger community. And I want to ask you real quick, can you describe to me what MPL Mena's signature play style is like? What do you guys like to do over there? Well, actually, we are getting a lot of experience from other regions like the Philippines, for example, which is not a secret, and also Indonesia and so on, because the players got international uh, experience by now. They went to Cambodia at MSC, they went to Malaysia, and also, if you remember with me, we had Games of the, of the Future in Russia. So Twisted Minds team, which is a team that's currently playing in MPL Mena, gained a lot of experience, and now they are the first. So. I would say that we have different kind of styles, but mostly we are applying the Filipino style, the utility junglers, the supports and what comes with it. And we also have some players who can apply or like play, I would say, the Assassin's meta in the current season. Uh, based on what I've seen, what I've been watching, what I've heard even from uh, people in the back, Mena players have very high game IQ. And that's why I kind of agree with you uh, as you say it, that you take the best parts of the Filipino meta, the macro-based play style. Uh, would you agree with that? Do, do you think, uh, in general, across the board, MPL mena players have high game IQ? Is that one of the main strengths you guys have as a region? Well, we are definitely developing, and time is in our favor, and also the home court is in our favor this time in the MSC, in the upcoming MSC. So I would say that the fan support will have a huge effect upon us, and the meta itself I wouldn't say that it is helping Mena as much as Mena is getting used to it because I would say, and this is something that a lot of people might argue with me about it, but Philippines creates Meta, meta and then other regions follow up. I, I don't know if this is actually a huge statement, I would say, but the Philippines actually always, uh, always develop and create new uh, Metas and other regions are catching up with it. And when they go to the Philippines, which would, which is what happened in the previous period of time they had to even with their own meta to comply and to master the filipino and the asian meta generally i would like to agree but it's not about that we're talking about mena right and i want to put you on the hot spot yasu <laughs> i'm gonna ask you a question that you have no right answering given that you guys are just at the time of recording going into week five of season five of mpl mena i'm gonna ask you, i'm gonna put you on the spot bro who do you think is going to represent MPL Mena at MSC 2024? Well, it's a really hard question uh, since we have a different criteria of choosing the teams currently. So uh, the best team or the champion or the, uh, the runner-up, as long as they are uh, Saudi representative teams, they will get qualified. So let's say, for example, if you have the champion from any other place other than Saudi Arabia, they will get qualified. And if the runner-up is from Saudi Arabia, they will also get qualified. But here's the tricky part here. If the champion is not from Saudi Arabia and the runner-up is not also from, the, from Saudi Arabia, the highest team in the ranking, let's say the third or something, will get the ticket to go to the MSC. So from my point of view and from the current events, and you really put me here on the spot, <laughs> I would say... <laughs> I'd say that Twisted Minds uh, is the most uh, qualified and experienced team. So this is my number one, not as ranking, but this is one of the teams that are going to go to uh, the MSC and R8 as they are showing a lot of growth in this season and they are coming in strong. Okay, so one way or another, uh, MPL Mena is sending out two representatives, right? Because of the whole yeah. Saudi uh, Arabia situation, them being the host. So your call yeah. is most likely... Twisted Minds and R8. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's talk about MPL Mena's narrative. Uh, as a region and given the teams, uh, the players that we've all grown to love over the past uh, few months, even years who have been together for a while now, 
What kind of story are MPL MENA teams telling when they come to the international stage? What is your developing region developing into? Where do you see that going? Well, I wouldn't count the first season and the second season as well. I, I, would, st uh, I would start counting MENA having uh, its own effect on the international stage from the third and up until now. So uh, some... I would say situations or like some um, circumstances and stuff that happened and faced MENA that made them uh, not show up as good as they showed themselves in MENA. So for example, in the previous season, Triple Esports didn't have their own uh, main gold laner and they had to adjust. Before that, we also had a similar situation. So just like avoiding that we struggled a little a uh, little bit when it comes to uh, the teams that qualified and, re and represented mena i would say that this season will be the best season for mena since all the teams already and all the teams have the ex experience uh, needed and they are uh, or like they um they got engaged with other regions and they have the experience that they gained from the other regions and importing some uh, players and coaches and assistants from other regions help them grow uh, a lot. So this season, for me especially, will be the best season for MENA in the, like, in the international stage generally because we have a lot of international events coming this year. And yeah, if I have to guess what is the best case scenario for MENA, and this is like my dream, course to have to get the championship itself but this is a huge dream i think this is all uh, like oh, everyone dreams of that but the best case scenario for us is top three to top five and again that's not impossible uh i, I agree with you uh when you said that mpl mena is now the biggest it's ever been the most developed it's ever been since there have been imports and uh at least track record wise MPL MENA teams have been performing. Right? They've become legit threats uh, year in, year out, international event after international event. And I got to remind you, buddy, I got to remind you, it was BTK first, right? M3, BTK. Uh, as recent as M5, December 2023, you'll remember, Deuce Volt from ECA. Mm -hmm. no, one, no, one, no one expected that, right? So who's to say, now that especially you guys have the home court advantage who's to say you might finish higher than five higher than four right yeah and and you can also look at Fireflux since they are one of the teams that always surprise the the, st the global stages and the international stages but to be honest and to be like frankly honest here I'm not satisfied with uh, what Mena have been doing in the past uh, in the past seasons because we always finished last or like a little bit above last, which is not what I anticipated or like what I waited from Mena. But this season I have high hopes, and this season we have what it takes to do it this time. I'm with you, my guest. I'm with you. I also hope, inshallah, that. MPL MENA goes far because, again, everybody loves an underdog story. Everybody loves uh, a new superpower on the block. And, again, that's what M5 did for us with this vault. And hopefully, hopefully, in the upcoming Mid-Season Cup, we, we see something from MENA, uh, whether it be R8, whether it be Twisted Minds, or someone else. Again, how, yeah. crazy, how crazy would that be if it wasn't one of the two, right? <laughs> Well, it will be as crazy as seeing me going on the international stage and dancing. This this crazy. All right. Half of that <laughs> sentence, very doable. The other, I'm not so sure. Thank you so much, Hi. my Yasta. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Yasu, you got, you're, you're amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to take our friends around the world talking about MOBB, telling us all about what MPL MENA brings to the table. Uh, I will see you very soon, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and it has been a pleasure it's a, it's a, it has been a long time since i've ever saw you so i would say to everyone be careful of what mena will bring you guys in the next international stage it's real that's real yes yeah, so you got to tell the people watching at home man we, we did not talk about this like I, I i did not tell him i was wearing the echo jacket well for me i don't know when i when i saw you i was like all right this this is meant to be this is meant to be <laughs> i don't have that jersey this is that's a signed jersey yeah 
Yeah, it's the signed jersey from all the members of Echo, and it has my name on the back. It's oh. one of the best memories I've ever had in my life. Oh, this and it uh, happens in the M5. I just have a random, you know, pink shirt, but nah, can confirm. We did not talk about this. <laughs> I literally just showed up on the call, and Yas was like, <gasps> "This is this, you wouldn't believe it." I said, "You wouldn't believe it." <laughs> 